thank you so much for joining this webinar. Uh, my name is Luna Li. Um, I'm the Global Business Development Manager at CM Uni. And thank you so much for joining this webinar. Uh, today's topic is how to sell your cosmetics in the Chinese market. Just want to let you know if you have any questions or uh, you know any uh, things you don't understand of this topic uh, we are talking about today. So please feel free to comment or Q and A us either on the uh, Zoom webinar or you can uh, comment us on our LinkedIn uh, LinkedIn page as well. We have the event setting up, so we have do uh, we are doing the live stream on both. Zoom webinar and LinkedIn uh, events here. Okay, and, and if there's any question you find after the webinar, um, you can also email us on info at cmuni.com. So, according to the report from the official Chinese National Bureau of Statistics website earlier this year, uh, earlier 2022, the total retail sales of cosmetics at Renminbi 402 billion yuan uh, with year-on-year -year growth 14%, uh, which is about six, um, 60 billion US dollars. Uh, that's roughly uh, a translation. Uh, through, um, so we are talking about how to sell your cosmetic in China today. This is the topic, but there can be a few different points of views to discuss this topic. And today we will emphasize on the angle of the changes of the Chinese regulations and laws. And through this webinar, you will find out what is the new challenges and the new opportunities uh, in the Chinese market. Okay, we have the three main topics to cover today. Uh, big topic. Uh, the first one is the new update, uh, updated cosmetic regulations. Uh, this is about the law side and uh, uh, cosmetic claims and ethics. Uh, and then this new cosmetic ingredient, which is NCI, we say that, management, NCI management. So we will analyze the difficulties uh, after the new law come, the, there are some difficulties or pitfalls and the potentials uh, potential uh, through the regulations changes in China. Also, at the start, I will quickly introduce my company, CM Uni, and our one-stop shop services for uh, Chinese cosmetic and food imports. So on the 1st of May 2021, which is last year, the new regulations came into effect and they have changed a lot. Uh, as people saying, the Chi Chinese cosmetic supervision era two has come. The new rules opens up some new great opportunities, but also introduced new difficulties and pitfalls. Uh, you may be one of the international companies or global, uh, or global cosmetic brands that haven't entered the Chinese market yet because the various of rules and difficult understandings of the laws. But since the new rules open up some best business potentials for you to enter the Chinese market, nowadays, the international, uh, the internet, uh, international uh, uh, internet makes it easier than ever for companies of all sizes to reach the world's uh, second largest, uh, currently second largest cosmetic market. If like our clients, uh, you have cosmetic products or food products and are looking forward to entering the Chinese market, currently valued, uh, what we said earlier, is about 60 billion US dollars, and would like to do so quickly and easily complying with all local regulations, CM Uni is your partner of choice. We have been helping companies like yours who have come to us and with our help have seen their products selling off the shelves in China. As CM Unit services go through the whole life cycle of your product, from your product's preparation stage, including import customs clearance, uh, the follow-up adverse reaction monitoring and such, we will help your products through all the regulatory process in China. We are here helping companies expand their brands into China by providing market admittance and compliance services as uh, we said earlier, one-stop solution. 
啊。CM Uni Services cover both cosmetic products and food supplement with regulation process. From the consulting stage to the customers,、uh, customers clearances,、uh, one-stop shop services.、Uh, so, if you are interested in all these details, take a look the bottom link, which is uh, in uh, our newsletter website.、Uh, same, you can use your phone to scan the QR code on the left of the screen to find out more. And I'm not. To,、uh, I'm not going to read all of it. And this is a quick view of our previous clients who are happy to be showing here. And, and so far, we have been working with over a thousand clients to successfully bring、uh, more than ten thousand different customer、uh, cosmetic products to the Chinese market. And GM Uni are particularly proud that our pass rate is way above the industry standard.、Uh, typically, it's eighty-five to ninety percent in China. Okay. Let's talk about the、uh, regulation. So, talking about regulation compliance, now, firstly,、uh, we will talk about the Chinese authorities that related、uh, with our topics today. So, the top one is the China State Council,、uh, which was the first and highest department that released the SAR regulation in 2020. As almost a year, two years ago,、uh, two years ago, and established the implementation、uh, time on first January 2021, which is the start of last year. Then it is the NMPA. NMPA stands for the Chinese National Medical Products Administration.、Uh, essentially, it's China's version of the FDA. Who is in charge of the practical management and supervision? So, if you're registering、uh, registering your、uh, ingredients or cosmetic products to the Chinese market,、uh, this is the government department、uh, will review your applications. And GM Uni is authorized by the NMPA and actually taking a lot of important work with the manufacturers and、uh, brand owners to get them sorted. Since the since the new Chinese cosmetic regulation came into in fact, several supplementary regulations have also been published, and there are three regulations. And we will mention them today. First one is a new cosmetic ingredient NCI registration and notification dossiers. This is the last topic we'll talk to talk talk about today, but very difficult as well. Second one is the rules on cosmetic classification and categorizations. Then the most famous one, regulations on the supervision and administration of cosmetics. Our subjects today、uh, will def、uh, definitely use all of them. So talking about how to sell them,、uh, you know, sell your cosmetics in the Chinese market, first need to know what is the rules of the Chinese market.、Uh, so the number one、uh, subject is the new updated cosmetic regulations,、uh, which is the a key, or we say, is the soul of the new era too.、Uh, now first, let's chat about SAR. SAR. No, not the Russian kind. Sar, C S A R.、Uh, sounds like、uh, Russian T S A R Sar. But our Sar, C S A R, stands for、uh, the Cosmetic Supervision and Administration Regulation.、Uh, talking about the new cosmetic regulations in China, it is the boss, and is the new cosmetic law has been first released by the China State Council. China's NMP released it、uh, as well as also put it into action. I、uh, just want to remind you again that if you got any questions during this webinar,、uh, please feel free to post them in the comments or the Q and A channel. We will answer you at the end of this webinar. So now, what is cosmetic means in China?、Uh, the definition. Well, on this screen, the regulation SAR C S A R Article Three. Based on the logic that we study regulations, now, I'm studying in China.、Uh, you know what the regulations about. I'm going to divide this law,、uh, this article, into three parts, which, which is the where,、uh, the part, the where, the use, and the purpose. So you can see the color in blue is the where.、Uh, 
uh, it is uh, the, what is the where, uh, which means the place on the human body uh, where the product is intended to be placed in contact with. Also on the color uh, on the screen, the color of the yellow is the use uh, is how the product is placed in contact with that part of the human body. And then the color of the black, black is the purpose. Mm. The purpose is, is what the product is intended to do with that part of the body. So first, the, the where. Uh, the where is uh, in, in the regulation we say, it says the surface of the human body, such as skin, hair, nails, or lips. What it means is that if the place is not just skin, hair, nails, or lips for uh, not just them. For example, for instance, uh, like nu nucleus membrane, uh, like oral cavity or your genitals, like this kind of places, they will not be considered um, like as the uh, you know as the human body. Like cosmetic, if you touch there, they're not considered as cosmetic. Uh, then the use is by uh, the armor regulation use is by rubbing, spraying, or other similar. Uh, the methods. In terms of the, this rule describes the use of injection would be odd. The purpose is for cleaning, protecting, beautifying or modifying, as we remember from that article. But it can't be applied to mucous membrane or damaged skin. Uh, those are all uh, out because they're not mentioned in that article. That's how this regulation works. So because of that will be treated as um, a medicine, not a cosmetic, uh, on damaged skin or, uh, you know, like oral places. For example, if it goes into the mouth, as we said, uh, it's probably, uh, probably not cosmetic. So cosmetics in China must be applied to human body surfaces. And if it does not touch the body, it doesn't count. Like air fresheners are out. And why is that? Yes, because air fresheners are not intent to place on the human body, uh, like on skin, hair and such. Take. Okay. So the method Method says rubbering, spraying, uh, rubbering, spraying, uh, a similar other uh, application pro uh, methods are fall under the definition of cosmetics. But injection, you can see on here, the injections or uh, swallowed or uh, ingested do not. So, so far, so easy. But now there is an exception rule comes out in regulation SAR. And what is that? Well, do you remember? Um, it says, if it goes in the mouth, uh, if it goes into the mouth, it probably not a cosmetic. Uh, for example, mouth wash, uh, like mouth wash, these kind of things are not cosmetic. But toothpaste, yes, toothpaste. SAR has specifically mentioned the toothpaste as a full article and describing it is actually regulated as a general cosmetic. So if you have toothpaste that want to enter the Chinese market, just come to find us. CM Uni can surely help you with that. Well, the in industry says since SARS came, the Chinese new cosmetics era is coming. Now why they say that? Because SAR had a lot of changes. For example, SAR made the definition of cosmetic clearly and it adjusted and improved the cosmetic classification. And SAR also brought a spotlight for protecting and supervising the online cosmetic businesses. And of course, SAR also increased the penalties for the violations and it added a new requirement, punish to the person to make sure everyone's responsibilities and together keep the Chinese cosmetic market in a good condition. And that's how SARS changes. Another interesting change is about the inter enterprise obligations. So um, before, uh, before SAR, 
there was only one role uh, in the cosmetic regulations based on uh, basically it's the manufacturer and um, uh, the registrant or we say filing person often this is the role of the brand owner uh, those uh, registrant and the filing person are the brand owner kind of so they were both named as production company uh, that was in the old law uh, they all all of them uh, saying is product production company but the government found that when a product is having problems it's difficult to come to investigate or punish the uh, convict convicted parties and potentially it can harm the market longer so as SAR introduced the new concept of registrant and filing person, sometimes we say a notifier as a filing person as well, for the first time in SAR. So it cl uh, clarified the roles and what their responsibilities are. So it's harder for illegal cosmetic products or uh, pri uh, like uh, piracy to survive. Next, we will talk about the cosmetic claims and ethics in China under SAR regulation. So how do you claim your cosmetics are super, super important? So it's not allowed to claim any efficacy on your labor by law. For example, if the witcher come to tell us that he wants to claim his potion Swallow's FXA, uh, Swallow is the, one of his uh, very famous potions name. Uh, if he, his po uh, potion Swallow's FXA, he say uh, Swallow can significantly, uh, significantly increase uh, vitality regeneration, then it's probably not allowed unless you can prove it and it has to be able to pass all the tests that is how the ethics is so important and the claims and ethics both really really important in china so we will see how why is that so um in the last topic i was just talking about uh the cosmetic definitions so as those cases and studies or examples that you see, the rules that in China are kind of a type of uh, standardized cosmetic regulations. So it means that uh, generally the authority will do a lot of hard work. Then they set up a standard ship, a standard ship, and you have to fit into that ship. So if, if you want to enter the Chinese market, you, uh, you, you need to be in that ship they're giving to you. So, of course, they will always have some other spaces for innovations, but the process are quite strict, too. Let's quick, uh, quickly take a look at the uh, EU cosmetic or, or UK cosmetic uh, regulation uh, classification. So, although the cosmetics in EU or UK have uh, quite a space for new ideas about how your ingredients or products work, the government didn't uh, uh, doesn't give a strict rule for how exactly to clarify your cosmetics. So uh, we have just to find some concepts and clues that how the categories work in this uh, EU regulation one two three three slash two thousand nine. The assessment of whether a product is a cosmetic product has to be made on the basis of a case by case assessment, uh, taking into account all characteristics of the product. So what it means is that. Each product has its unique, uh, unique characters. We need to uh, judge each of your uh, case, each of your, they need to judge of this, each of your cosmetic individually to give a category. And, the, and it might even be creating a new category if no one made it before. So there is a, uh, it isn't a clear borderline. Uh, so here is the same. This is the common criteria uh, criteria rules for diagnose where your cosmetic belongs to. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at the Chinese classification for cosmetics. Mm -hmm. This is the Chinese regulation SAR Article 4. Uh, the state shall classify and manage cosmetics and cosmetic raw materials or sometimes are ingredients according to the degree of its risk. According to the degree of risk, 
啊。那 state state 那 Chinese state will 呃、uh, classify and manage both cosmetics and cosmetic raw materials, which means the ethics and the claims、uh, will determine whether the products fall within the scope of the cosmetic classification. And it also shows that the Chinese regulator will classify the cosmetic products. And the the classification of cosmetic products are quite clear here. They they gave you the certain uh, rules. Uh, so same here, we will take a look the ingredients or raw materials soon later. Now see the article sixteen.、Uh, this is、uh, the definition of the cosmetic classification rules. The article sixteen says, cosmetics used for higher dyeing, hair perming. Franco removing and whitening,、uh, sunscreening, anti-hair laws, or claiming any new affixes are special cosmetics. All other cosmetics are general cosmetic.、Mm -mm, uh, general cosmetics. As you can see,、uh, the the state has given you a very strict. And limited scopes about what the cosmetics ingredients or products are. By claiming them to a certain category according to their affixes, NMPA has listed、uh, classification form to managing all the cosmetic products, and this is an area which we see many businesses struggle with. Let's take a look at that form. Here is the translated NMPA ethics list form. So on the screen, column one is the reference number.、Uh, reference number. Column two is the name of the ethics. There are twenty-six、uh, existing ethics plus one、uh, plus a classification for new ethics in the、uh, Chinese regulation. So if your product claim falls under the first five plus a. Types、uh, on the screen、uh, of those affixes, it is classified as a special cosmetic.、Uh, I will use、um, monitoring,、uh, moisturizing.、Uh, this is a general affixing, which is a, you know、uh, as example. And then we will pick a few affixes to、uh, describe from this form. So the example to clarify the difference between an affixing and a claim. Look, look here.、Uh, the moisturizing, whereas the claim is called mild and gentle skin care.、Uh, this is a very simple example. But if you have any problem deciding what is an affix and what is a claim in China, ZM Uni can help you with it. The first one is number number eight、uh, in on that form. This is a summary of an exception claim that can,、uh, that any product affix、uh, does not belong to the following twenty twenty six categories will be considered as a special cosmetic. Still,、uh, an example of a special cosmetic category. This is the number one hair dyeing. So the the law has said generally, hair dyeing products are. Class, uh, classified as special cosmetics, but it does not mean all the hair dyeing claimed products are special cosmetics. For example, washing wash out hair dyes do not belong to this category. And why? The definition of this hair dyeing ethics is to change hair color in a way that cannot be washed away or reversed. Okay, so if you've been using Google Translate、uh, or other translate on the Chinese regulations as published, I feel I should in intervene before you attempt to cut your throat in despair. Well, some of friends have been experienced the lacking of the meaning in SAR by trying to understand how each word means in English,、mm, but it's not always working. Because sometimes it's not just what the words mean; it includes the background or the case studies behind every affix in China. And Jian Muni is here to explain the regulations in English.
So if you need to understand how to apply to your own cosmetic or food, the best solution is always come to drop ZM Uni an email or pick up your phone to ask us what is your actual problem and what you want to achieve and we can always find the best solution to help you. Okay, then next with the form, uh, we'll come back to here. The form of ethics is from 6 to 26 uh, uh, on form later. Our con uh, sorry, the earlier uh, form early we saw that one are considered general cosmetics. Again, I'll pick a few general uh, ethics, uh, uh, ethics to talk about. Let's take a look. The first one. Here, number six. Uh, this, uh, this is called acne removing. Uh, acne removing ethics uh, is considered differently to special uh, ethics. Uh, number three. Uh, the number three was uh, Franco removing and whitening. So make sure you write the zero before the six when you apply to the NMPA. If you claim your ethics uh, as uh, acne removing, then it's a general cosmetic. So acne removing helps to reduce acne or slow down the growth of acne, including blackheads or whiteheads or skin recovery uh, after getting rid of acne. Uh, this is the definition of the law. But if the product claims either uh, sterilization or antibacteria prevent, uh, preventing bacteria or anti-inflammatory, uh, this kind of uh, ethics, then they do not count as cosmetics. Uh, they cannot be claimed under acne removing ethics. Another one is the number eight. Uh, it's called repairing ethics. Uh, repairing ethics helps to repair or maintain the application site to keep it in a normal uh, good condition or normal or good condition. That's the translation we, uh, we, we translate from the Chinese law. But be aware of claiming repairing ethics eh, that uh, mentions or visually presents any diseases on the cosmetic product labels. Uh, this is not allowed. And neither is using words or phrases which present uh, uh, med medicinal, uh, medicinal intent or um, instant treatment on these kind of things. Uh, but if a product claims to use for those unusual areas, such as uh, scars, like we said, or scars, or scalded, burned, or damaged parts, etc., then they are not considered as cosmetics neither. Okay, this is the example, and let's pick the last example for general uh, ethics. The number 11, uh, which is my favorite uh, ethics, it's called moisturizing ethics. Uh, it's to, moisturizing ethics is to supply or enhance the skin's moisture content, uh, oil content, uh, etc. On the application size, uh, so when you have those ethics on the applic uh, application site to keep it moisturized or to reduce trans, uh, uh, trans uh, abdermal water loss uh, or moisture loss. So same as this ethics, eh? the ethics eh, from uh, 6 to 26 on the page 28 we saw earlier, that form, are considered general cosmetic, which also means that you can import to China without animal testing. But now we know one of the most important conditions to avoid animal testing when you are ex uh, exporting your cosmetic products to China is to be able to clarify, classify your cosmetic uh, pro or products as general cosmetics. So ZMUNI will make sure your claims uh, claimed ethics are appropriate for a general cosmetics and advise you accordingly. We will review the detailed conditions later. Oh, uh, one important little thing here uh, on the screen. I wanted to mention uh, we were talking about the animal testing exemption in China. So 
Well, you apply for avoiding animal testing or laboratory testing, you need to provide a GMP or ISO or QMS form of, of this, this uh, doc certifications from the authorities in your own country to ask for the Chinese NMPA. It might change, but so far in most countries, it needs a proof directly from your local government so on this screen, the left is handed out by the local government and the right, uh, the right one is issued by Intertech, a uh, certification body. You can use either certification, but only one issued by a local authority or government will let you avoid animal testing. These following four methods can be used to prove the efficacy of your product. Uh, first is uh, literature or research data, uh, which is the uh, publicly published technical literature or international laws and regulations currently in effect. Or unpublished research uh, results that fully support the product's efficacy claims. Second is the human efficacy evaluation test. Sometimes we just call them human trial. As a translation, you, you can see sometimes we call human trial as well, and they all make sense, uh, they're the same thing, which is conducted on humans and uh, clinical proofs, the product's claims. So please pay attention to ethical uh, requirements when relying, uh, relying on this method, though. Third one is consumer in-use test, uh, which refers to the process of uh, effectively collecting, sorting out, and analyzing the uh, consumer's product use results. Uh, and finally is the laboratory test. Uh, this is the one most people need to be aware of uh, in the red color on the screen. The laboratory test includes, but is not limited to animal tests. In ritual tests on organs, tissues, cells, uh, uh, those uh, physical and physical and um, chemical tests and etc. Uh, but don't worry, we are going to see how does NMPA uh, give us a door to exemption from the laboratory test, uh, which will include avoiding the animal testing. Here, uh, here is the chat. Uh, what, uh, this chat is uh, one of the technical guidance for cosmetic ethics and claims uh, appendix. Uh, some people might notice that there were, uh, you see on the screen, so you, people might, might think there, here there were 27 uh, in total, 27 ethics we talked about earlier. But here are only 20 ethics claims listed on the claim evaluation requirements on screen. Why is that? Well, it's because not all ethics is require uh, evaluation testings. So not all of them. Uh, uh, this, um, this form uh, on this screen, this chat is really important. So we may take a couple of minutes to describe. Uh, so here we go. Let's see the red from number one to three. Uh, uh, the top one to three here. Let me take here. Pin. So from here, one, two, three. Freckle removing and whitening, sun screening, and hair uh, anti hair loss. So if you claim any efficacies from this three, you are required to do the human trial. But importantly, you must do the human trial uh, in the NMPA approved laboratories in China. Uh, Currently, only um, 25 existing human trial labs have been approved by the NMP in China, which is not a lot. And if you remember, if you remember these three ethics, uh, this uh, frankly removal and whitening, belong to the special cosmetic ethics, uh, those categories we talked about earlier. So special cosmetics can't avoid animal testing, uh, can't avoid laboratory testing yet, including uh, including all those kind of testings, uh, animal 
uh, the registration like why because they the this is the testing uh, this is the uh, one of the testing but the uh, laboratory testing um, for the including animal testing they also have another procedure which is during the registration procedures uh, as another set of requirements uh, apart from this script so just uh, you just need to remember uh, special ethics is can't avoid laboratory testing or uh, animal testing okay next is the purple uh, purple ethics on the screen from four to six here we go uh, this is the next so they are acne removing noise rising and repairing if you claim any ethics is from this three then you just need to do the human trial in any laboratory uh, you don't have to use the chinese nmps approved labs uh, which is much simpler also if you remember remember from earlier these three ethics is belong to the general cosmetic categories so you don't need to do any animal testings at all next from 7 to 13 uh, those 7 to 13 so those seven ethics they claims which are in in the blue color uh, they only uh, for them you only need to choose one test from either human trial uh, either human trial um, consumer use test uh, or laboratory test hmm. the triangle icon uh, at the bottom those triangle icon mm, in the literature documents research data sections means that you can add this part if you want uh, if you want you can add them but it's, it won't matter if you don't so basically you only need to choose uh, any one of those three types uh, only one of those three types uh, of the tests next is uh, 14 and 15 uh, those two moisturizing and hair care uh, those two those can be uh, those two uh, moisturizing and hair care can be the simplest and cheapest one among them all basically you can choose any one of those four types of tests uh, human trial consumer use test laboratory test or literature document or research data any of those four um, and usually um, like uh, document research data the last one usually this one is preferred because it's dead simple and easy you just need to show any documents that show and prove the those ethics claims had a record that the products had no usage problem as i mentioned when i started presenting this slide ethics 16 to 19 are a bit different so let's start with 20. we talk about 20 first 20 is claim new ethics uh, this one confused many businesses um, because it is a bit open and it says the evaluation method should be selected according to the specific ethics claim but what exactly are the rules well the rules is if i claim a new ethics for my product that only works by physical methods or if the new ethics can be directly identified through the senses like sight or smell then you don't need to do any of those ethics evaluation tests you don't need to do any of those on screen okay now i'll talk about ethics uh, 16 to 19 those four so 16 uh, 16 called specific claims uh, bracket claiming suitable for sensitive skins tear free formula so if your products claim this efficacy then you need to pick either human trial or consumer use test okay number 17 uh, says specific claims about the efficacy of an ingredient or raw material what does it mean 
啊 ，what does that mean? So if my cosmetic claims or I promote、啊、an ingredient in my product, I will also be required to provide、啊、proof for the efficacy of that ingredient as well. So for example,、啊、I have a product that contains uh, uh, niacinamide. Niacinamide is a well-known、uh, whitening and moisturizing ingredient, which I promote on the packaging with a sentence like um, um, "contains、uh, niacinamide,"、uh, niacinamide for brighter skin.、Uh, because I have called out this ingredient on my packaging, I'll be required to prove this whitening efficacy eff-、uh, for both my product. Which must be using a human trial, and for the ingredient itself, which can、uh, be by any of the lists above. Similarly, if the、uh, niacinamide is advertised、uh, to be both moisturizing and whitening, then I will be asked to prove that niacinamide can do both、uh, these things as well as my product being able to do the same. The rule here is that any affixes of your products and any ingredients you call out in your packing、uh, should match. This mean th-、uh, this may- might mean you have to claim multiple affixes and provide separate proofs for key ingredients as well as the product as a whole. Uh, so, of course, when you can choose any one of the four tests or documents to prove the affixes, you will want to choose the cheapest one.、Uh, that's the literature document or research data, and that will that will be eighteen and nineteen, which is claim gentle, no stimulation, or claim、uh, quantitative index like time, statistics, etc. These two are very similar to any other general cosmetic efficacy claims. For example,、um, I still use moisturizing efficacy, but at this time, I specifically want to claim it as, let's say,、uh, I say 24 hour moisturizing efficacy with the time limit.、Uh, this claim is slightly different from the、uh, from you just say moisture. Rising FXC because I said time restriction, twenty-four、uh, hour、uh, restriction. So because of that, you have to choose one test from this three: human trial, consumer、uh, use test, laboratory test. Just to give you another example, let's say still moisturizing FXC, but this time I claim that. There are eighty percent of consumers says、uh, my、uh, about my product that they feel this product is moisturizing.、Huh? So good. And this time I limited it the data.、Huh? The data is eighty、uh, percent of the consumers the data, and I have to choose one of the three same tests above:、huh? human trial, consumer use test,、uh, or laboratory test. Yes, this slide now、uh, we will talk about everything here, and it looks so complicated. But we have just gone through all these chats. Very well done. Let's have a stretch for a second,、uh, maybe for for maybe a few seconds before we go into the next stage. And the, when we took a look,、uh, took a look at the final section,、uh, it might be.、Uh, It's、very important, more complex because it's about ingredients. Although ingredients are similar as the、uh, cosmetic products, but they have、uh, something quite different because people are mostly normally they, they come to ZM unit to ask, "Oh, what about those、uh, raw material? How about I'm from manufacturer and my those ingredients are you know all been proved in、uh, which which country? But how about here? You know, so give give me、uh, five seconds maybe. Let's see." And we will go through the next and last section today. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, stretched out. The next one, new cosmetic ingredient 
NCI management. This is the uh, last topic we're going to talk about today. Let's take a look. Before we learn how NCI works, uh, we need to know what is NCI in China. So if my ingredient is already not new, uh, like in uh, Korea, in Canada, in, uh, in America, U U A, uh, EU or UK, can it still be considered as a new CI in China? Well, the answer is yes. These are basically two lists or documents out here, out there. The first list is um, called IECIC. So IECIC stands for um, Inventory of Existing Cosmetic Ingredients of China. And IECIC has listed uh, 8,965 ingredients that are currently known as accepted that have been used in cosmetics in China. This is the uh, one way of no. Let me choose a pen. So here we go. This is um, to in total that number. And uh, uh, another document is called the CIF, uh, the CIF and the Technical Standards for Cosmetics, short for STSC. And the latest version is 2015 STSC, which is um, uh, which lots of people don't know about this document. Uh, don't know about this document. STSC has covered all the ingredients or substances that have restrictions or similar usage limits, warnings and inspections, evaluation testing, standards, and etc. What it means is that if your cosmetic ingredient is not included in either of them, it will probably count as a NCI, since China authority isn't re record your hasn't record your ingredient in their list for safety uh, solution yet. So it's simple to diagnose an ingredient as uh, NCI or not. Oh well, I think what I I've done here is uh, like this one is here. Sorry, that screen. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. So a new cosmetic ingredient is um, one that falls outside of both IECIC 2021 and STSC 2020, uh, 2015, or is an ingredient that listed in either of these documents, but is being used for a purpose that isn't currently listed, or is being used in a quantity level that outside of what it lists as safe uh, guidelines and just um, you know you can just say all those on the screen about the numbers uh, don't worry we will uh, uploading this slide later on our new slider website and if you're interested you can download this slide later on CMU new, uh, new slider website now let's take a look at the new cosmetic ingredients classification uh, NCI uh, new cosmetic ingredient NCI are classified based on their affixes and they come into three categories we have a five are uh, five there are high risk affixes and five there are medium risk affixes and then 57 low risk affixes now just to make a note that there are other high bi biological activity ingredients are counted as medium risk ingredients so they get added to the five medium risk affixes okay okay the five high risk affixes has mm, preservatives sunscreens colorants hair dyes whitening agent affixes uh, those are five high very simple 57 low risk affixes include uh, uh, all this on the screens. I'm going to, I'm not going to read them aloud. Uh, you can say all this and others, uh, and others, uh, some of the affixes are total tw uh, 57 are belongs to low risk. And let's say the five medium risk affixes. Uh, they have uh, anti hair loss, anti acne, anti wrinkle, 
except physical anti wrinkle. Anti dandruff, deodorant efficacies. Remember, we mentioned that there are other high、um, bio biological active ingredients like uh, 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 a logo peptides, peptides, proteins. Uh, counted as medium risk ingredients, so they get added、uh, on top of these five medium risk affixes. So, how about if our、uh, NCI has multiple affixes? When NCI has multiple affixes, use the highest risk,、uh, the higher one. For example, an ingredient that is both deodorant and cleansing agent. Would be notified as、uh, medium risk. For example, if you are both, the, yeah. For example, like here is medium, here is low risk, and then you have to choose the higher,、uh, highest one, which is medium. Now we have learned how to、um, define a NCI and how do we classify a、uh, NCI in China. We want to know how to register them、uh, for the next stage. Here is the regulation、uh, called New Cosmetic Ingredient NCI Registration and Notification Dossiers. Well, this、uh, regulation will tell us how to register your NCI,、uh, New Cosmetic Ingredient, in China. The NCI pre-market process,、uh, which is now we talk about the registering or notifying. Sometimes we say filing as well.、Uh, um, Pre-marketing process is about、uh, you know about all those and you use which name depends you you the, because I said、uh, you can be registration or you can call yourself、uh, filing or notifying so which name you are going to use、uh, depends on which category your NCI has been classified、uh, by us so if your NCIs are in the high risk NCI category. Then you have to do pre-market registration.、Uh, you see the first line on the screen, and pre-market registration takes、uh, longer time, more testing, and more complicated than the other two. But your NCIs are diagnosed in the medium risk or low risk.、Uh, then you can just have to do the. Uh, Pre-market notification or filing. Sometimes we say that,、uh, which are need less time,、uh, the high risk than the high high risk one, and they are also simpler.、Uh, they spend more or less testing depending on whether it's a medium risk or low risk. I just remind you again, if your new ingredient has multiple affixes, then you will use the higher、uh, applicable risk. For example, an ingredient that both, like deodorant, remember, and cleansing、uh, agent, would be notified、uh, notified as medium risk. So let's talk about what NCI registration involves.、Uh, it involves responsible person authorization and system account applications. Then you are going to register your dossier and do testing to prove it's safe. Then it is the NMPA are gonna do to do the format review. Then they will do the technical review, and then they will do an approval and registration certificate. And you can see those final three steps will generally take about six to. Ah,、uh, twelve months. Ah,、uh, this three、uh, steps usually six to twelve、uh, months. Um, once the、uh, your staff is going to the NMPA. So compare that to the NCI notification process here on this screen. The first two steps are the same,、uh, but you only have to do the NMPA format review, and then the notification information has published on the NMPA official website. <laughs> and that only takes five to ten working days. That's a huge amount of difference, isn't it? <laughs> so if you are lucky enough to be、uh, one of the medium or low risk affixes, it's gonna to be a breeze. Once so once you have、uh, got your approval from NMPA, 
then your NCI is gonna enter for uh, enter to a three year monitoring period. Uh, so it's not finished yet. Uh, after you uh, you proved this is the same, uh, this is the place you will go. And these three years, uh, this is to mon uh, monitoring the safety of the new product you releasing in China. So your NCI after approved during that three years, you have to um, apply them to a product. Uh, it's going to involve ongoing monitoring. Uh, so after three years, it's still going on. It's going to involve a safety monitoring a annual report. So. Um, the safety risk control reports as well. But here is the uh, kinch during that three year monitoring period that registered NCI can only be used by the applicant and an authorized partners that you have allowed to use your ingredients. And after that three year monitoring period, then it will become listed in the IECIC and can be used by anybody. Now, we are not going to talk about too much about the uh, what happens if it's not safe, uh, because then we are going to uh, have, uh, we have to enter the problem scenarios. But really, the main point here is that you will get a three year monitoring executive period. Who can be um, applicant? So if I want to apply for NCI, who can be applicant? The answer is everybody. For example, manufacturer, uh, manufacturers of new cosmetic ingredients can apply, or it would be, uh, it could be just a brand owners of cosmetics that are using, uh, are immediately using uh, cosmetic ingredients are currently using this NCI from the third party manufacturers. The responsibilities of the company who applies, they will be responsible for the registry, uh, registry, registration and the notification of the products. And they will be responsible for the quality and safety of the NCI. Then they will be responsible for the authority um, uh, authenticity. Oh, that's a that's a difficult word to to <laughs> pronounce. Uh, authenticity. Sorry, and the scientific rigor uh, of dossiers. Uh, those are the one. Then we will got uh, we've got the other part involved, which is. Uh, the Chinese responsible person, who can be a Chinese responsible person, uh, just reminds you, person here doesn't mean a person, uh, a human person, it means a company, a human company. So this is a, a Chinese responsible uh, person company, okay? It can either be a subsidiary or branch company that is located in mainland China, has to be in mainland China, or it could be an individual distributor or an importer also has to be located in mainland China. Uh, you just need to be in mainland China. And, or you can use a third party company that spe uh, specializes in being the Chinese responsible person like us, Jian Muni. So responsibilities of uh, this party, uh, Chinese responsible person, are to register and notify uh, new cosmetic ingredients in the name of the applicant, uh, to assist the applicant in the safety monitoring, uh, that three year um, reporting and reporting of the NCI during the three year monitoring period, to assist the applicant in recall of the NCI if there are any safety issues, uh, it's also we undertake a great, a great safety and uh, uh, quality responsibilities of uh, then NCI when placing it in the Chinese market. And aut ultimately, we are there to cooperate with the authorities and the supervisions and inspection work that goes into all the safety monitoring. Now, do pay attention that each NCI can only have a single Chinese responsible person a company. As you can see, your Chinese responsible person has a whole list of responsibilities here. And it's absolutely essential that you pick the right uh, Chinese responsible person for the from the start.
as if you want to change、uh, change later, you will need a written permission from that Chinese responsible person, and that can be very very tricky to do. Next, we are going to talk about the system account application. That's got three phrases. It's an online application. You can see the information on the screen. So I'm going to not going to read it. I know that this is one of the step. Here, both the applicant and the Chinese responsible person will have to submit the individual files showing their. Personnel, their safety risk monitoring system, and their evaluation system. Here, the POA or author、uh, authorization letter.、Uh, this is the same thing.、Uh, can be you know translated differently. Will contain the company name of the applicant,、uh, the company name of the authorized Chinese responsible person, the scope of authorization and authorization period. And that will get signed or stamped. And、um, stamping is typically what we do. So in Asia, we tend to、uh, stamp documents. Then you will need to get、uh, notarized by the Chinese embassy, and finally, it will be legalized. Next, onto the dossiers. Here is the、uh, NCI dossier requirements. The five base of information they need is basically informations of an NCI,、uh, the R&D reports, manufacturing process and spe、uh, specifications,、uh, the safety assessments, and the technical requirements of the NCI. But the general principle in all of this is that you need to be able to fully demonstrate the、uh, safety. Uh, safety and risk management for each NCI. About the basic information,、uh, there are there is a couple of ma、uh, mandatory things that you need to know. One is all your new cosmetic ingredient names. That is include your INCI name, your Chinese raw material name, which is Chinese ingredient name,、uh, the chemical name. The trade name and the、uh, CAS number, CAS、uh, CAS number. Then you are gonna have to list out the source and the characteristics. For example, it is a chemical polymer. It is plant,、uh, mineral,、um, animal,、uh, nano,、uh, nano,、um, algal peptides,、um, all those things. There are two high useful、uh, and、uh, bytes of information you can include here、uh, that will help your application. Which is if you can prove that your product has a history of safe use in cosmetics listed overseas for more than three years, that will save you a lot of pain in a little bit later on. Or if you are got、uh, if got a history of being a safety edible ingredient. For example, honey.、Ah, those are、uh, those are the information. And next, you will need to do your new cosmetic ingredient、uh, and your research development report that comes in four parts. You need your background,、uh, your NCI base,、uh, basic information、uh, that we have just discussed. Uh, which include the sub substances name, the INCI name, the trade name, the source, uh, uh, the composition, the relative uh, uh, molecular, mo molecular uh, the mass,、uh, the mo molecular formula,、uh, the chemical structure,、uh, the physical and the chemical properties, and etc.、Uh, you can see them all on the screen. And finally, your efficacy sub、uh, supporting data.、Uh, those things are、uh, very, you know, you will be、uh, very important. But you will be、uh, understanding them if you go through the whole process. And here,、uh, we've talked about little about that. You you need to put in the manufacturing process.、Uh, according to raw material resource 
briefly describe the main process steps and the process um, parameters of raw material production and explain whether the production process may introduce safety risk substances and the corresponding control method. For example, if you got a chemical uh, syn synthesis ingredient, then you want to talk about specific starting materials, reaction conditions, uh, uh, auxiliary agents used, uh, intermediate, uh, inter intermediate products and uh, byproducts in the reaction process, uh, impurity or uh, axio auxiliary agents remaining in the final products, etc. So natural ingredients, you'd want to talk about the source, processing, technical, uh, technology, uh, etc. methods, uh, including, you know, they all on the screen um, here, which is uh, described, but uh, yeah, it takes a lot of time. Uh, so let's just talk about later. We don't have much time. Uh, we talk about later. You can see or you can come to ask ZM Uni. So next one, you are going to the quality control standards. Uh, you can see all the stuff on the screen. About te uh, stability testing uh, to prove which type of the uh, stability test is based on uh, to the characteristics of this NCI. Uh, based on the time we have today, uh, I won't chat all of the in details, but uh, if you ask ZM Uni uh, to download my slides today, or you know you can you know always come to us, uh, in especially our newsletter website uh, to help, you know, find out more information here. So you're always welcome to do that. Next is quality specifications and inspection methods. So there are six main things uh, you can looking for uh, for the quality specific uh, fission and inspection methods here. Again, we do need to highlight any uh, potential safety risk substances and their control standards. Uh, these things are things like um, uh, microgansm. Oh, okay, yeah, those are on the screen again. You can see here. And then you need to include the testing methods. Okay, and now to basically you need to prove that it, uh, your product safe by those. And the next one, uh, next one is the safety assessment too. Uh, so of those documents, two of those documents are quite straightforward. You've got your sum, uh, summary of uh, toxic log logical safety evaluation and your safety assessment uh, report. But we also have this here. Uh, we also have this toxic uh, to toxicity testing reports. And this is very important here um, because the person who does that will have to prove they have a five years ago at least in this industry. So doing this kind of reports and then an MPA will look for uh, that to be proved. Okay. Here on the screen, again, uh, it's uh, quite detailed of each testing about, but today we just talk about one general topic, uh, which is focused on the toxicity testing. Uh, so here's a list of the 12 types of, of toxicity tests that you can do. Uh, here are two key conditions that you need to have to avoid animal testing. Uh, those two last pages is going to be uh, nearly the end of today's webinar. So we we'll just take a look the uh, how how it goes. Uh, so this one is to prove your new uh, cosmetic ingredient uh, had um, uh, safety history more than three years uh, out of China, outside of China, you need to collect all the evidences to uh, prove uh, and this ingredient has been safely used overseas uh, for three years and bringing them to us to put them in front of the NMPA. So we won't, you know, we won't talk about too much, but again, this is one of the uh, details that you can do and try to avoid the animal testing. And what's the other one? Let's take a look. The other one uh, is uh, 
condition that for avoiding te animal testing to prove your NCI has a safe edible history. As, as what we said earlier, for example, honey, uh, if your uh, in ingredient, edible ingredient already has a food safety certification in China, like other people already used it, for example, honey or, you know, you know, mushroom or this kind of thing, you are golden. On the other hand, maybe it is not rec recognized as a food in China yet. Then you are going to be looking for a local authority. For example, um, in the US, it would be the FDA who will have issued a GRAS, G-R-A-S, uh, GRAS certification. So GRAS being generally, generally recognized as safe, CMUni can help you with this as well. Okay. Next. So earlier, we had a slide showing 12 toxicity tests included, uh, include animal tests. So here on this screen are some solutions for us to be able to avoid uh, the toxicity or animal testing in China. Here has four alternatives uh, to animal testing. It means that if you can do any of the tests listed here, you can avoid animal testing in China. The last two more things are about the NCI post-market process. Ah, no, the very last two things. So remember, we were having three-year monitoring period uh, after your NCI passed the registration or notification stage. Here we go. Those two things are uh, two unique reports uh, required by NMP in the uh, certain situation uh, during this three-year monitoring period. So the first one, uh, this report is the NCI Monitoring Safety Annual Report. So after your NCI pass the pre-market registration or filing review, uh, you enter that three-year monitoring period. Uh, and the NCI, uh, this new cosmetic ingredient, needs to do uh, the safety checking annual report each year during the three years. So this is uh, mandatory by NMPA. The other one, uh, which is the last one we're going to talk about, is NCI Safety Risk Management Report. This report is not as important as the early one because uh, this report only needed when your NCI occurs safety prob problems uh, during that three-year monitoring period. So you might not need this report, uh, but another that um, annual report is required. You Every year, you just have to do it. Okay, so far, so good. That's us. Uh, time's up today. So thank you so much for joining our webinar. Uni. Come to find us and trade with China now!